By the 18th century, agriculture had become the predominant industry in the area, and many corn mills had grown up around the River Colm and its tributaries. The problem of transportation was looming. Roads were primitive, and the expanding transport of the age, the good old horse and cart, was finding it hard to cope with the poor road facilities. I suppose it was a case of potholes rather than motorway cones. But major developments were stirring in the north of England, and this would soon have a profound effect on the Culm Valley. In 1808, Richard Trevithick displayed his newly designed train set to a largely uninterested public on the site where Euston Station now stands. He tried hard to convince everyone of its merits, but just seemed to be going round in circles. In the north of England, industrialists, particularly in the coal mining industry, realised that greater loads could be pulled if primitive wagons ran on rails instead of trundling on badly made roads that led to rivers and seas. Horse-drawn trains emerged, slow but getting there eventually. The stationary steam engine had already been invented, and some bright spark thought of putting wheels on it so that it could be used to pull wagons up and down a metal railway, thus pensioning off the good old horse. Hence the very first industrial steam locomotives appeared around the coal pits in the north of England. By 1813, William Headley and Tim Hackforth had developed their famous locomotives, Willem Dilly and Puffing Billy. I suppose it sounds better than Thomas the Tank Engine. Another pioneer of steam was George Stevenson, who started life as a boot repairer, bless his soul. On the 27th of September 1825, he built his famous locomotion, and to the cheers of crowds and excited passengers, steamed into Darlington. The Stockton and Darlington Railway was launched. Transportation would never be the same again.